Hey guys, Garrett here from Gun Gamers today for another piece of, well, it's not quite forgotten gear, but it's not as common as it used to be. Anyway, what I have here in front of me is the Type 56 chest rig. Now, this chest rig is, from what I can tell in my research, the original chest rig. This dates back, of course, to the 1950s. They made these up until probably the late 70s and early 80s. And these were originally made and developed in China. And the reason for that is, as you can kind of guess from the name, Type 56 corresponds to the Chinese copy or the Chinese licensed uh, AK pattern rifle, the Type 56. So this is sort of a rig that carries everything that is issued to someone in the Chinese military at the time that they would be given with their Type 56. An important reason why I want to discuss this rig today is that the Chinese were not the only ones to use it. Or at least more importantly, the Soviet Union was one of the many users of the Type 56 chest rig. Uh, we'll get to a little bit closer up, but there's actually Cyrillic markings on here from the last person that used this. Ultimately, these type of chest rigs were spread around to other communist or other nations that used the AK type or AK-47 firearm or licensed copies thereof. An important one is the Soviet Union at the time used these in Afghanistan during the Soviet-Afghan War in the late 70s and early, early through mid-1980s. These are a nice essentials only carrier for somebody that wanted to do a sort of classic Russian or classic or late Soviet Union type impression, or for someone that is wanting to do an op for or guerrilla fighter or a militia fighter, someone that just wants to carry only the basics, nice lightweight day type rig. You could also couple this with a backpack, some type of assault pack or other gear if you wanted to have very minimalist on uh, as far as your rifle is concerned, like if you have a short AK, and then carried some other type of weapon system with that, such as possibly an RPG or uh, additional ammunition for an assistant gunner for a PKM, something like that. Anyway, I'm going to bring the camera back and we're gonna get some close-ups on this rig and go over some of its features. All right, before we zoom in a little bit closer to get some of the more uh, details of the chest rig, I wanted to kind of span out to show how wide the rig actually is. So from one end to the other, it is 25 inches approximately. And of course, from the top here to the bottom of the mag pouch here is about nine inches. The straps are adjustable as you can see, uh, but you won't find buckles or anything like that on this particular rig. This was before all of that. This is the time when canvas and metal and things le and leather, things like that, those were common materials that load-bearing gear and, and quote-unquote tactical gear at the time was made out of. You can see this particular rig is made out of a very thick canvas type material. This is both good and bad. Canvas is definitely durable, but of course it's heavy, it absorbs moisture, and it eventually falls apart unless it's been taken care of. Uh, definitely something to consider with this is to get some of those uh, silicate packets to help store with the rig, to help pull the moisture away from it and keep it from getting too wet and moldy. Oftentimes you will even buy these and they will be covered in mold. I managed to get lucky on this one. All right, there are some markings that are on the Type 56 chest rig. Uh, my particular example, there's a stamp right here that's supposed to have Chinese lettering and characters. It should actually say 762 right in the middle here to indicate that it is for the Type 56 rifle, chambered in 762 by 39. But you can see that has been crossed out and then some type of paint marker or something like that has been written over it with this 3261 and then what appears to be a pound tag or a number sign and then a six. I'm not quite sure what these numbers mean. I have a feeling it's a unit of whatever Russian unit got a hold of this, perhaps even the individual trooper's number 
that was a part of this as well. I'm not sure if anything correlates to this. If you do know or may have some type of idea, feel free to put it in the comments below this video so we can discuss it together. Of course, on the front here, in the same white paint marker or something like that, there are three letters here in Cyrillic. I have asked somebody to potentially give me some type of translation or insight as to what this could mean. When he translated the letters to Latinized, it stands for G, D, and K. Now, what those could mean, I have no idea. I couldn't find any particular Russian groups that had the initials GDK. The best guess I have is that the individual trooper that was issued this rig or had purchased this rig or had acquired it somehow, they had put their initials on it in order to prevent somebody else from getting their hands on it. Uh, this is fairly common with rigs like this that were found in Afghanistan to have some type of initial with the trooper on it. So each one of these pouches are referred to as cells on this particular rig, at least from the research that I've been able to find. I don't know if that's an old school term or something like that. But the first three cells across the front here are obviously designed for Type 56 7.62 by 39 mags. I don't have any 762 by 39 mags handy, but they do fit 545 AK mags. These are the mags for my AK PMC. You can see they almost come down into the bottom and the flap totally closes over them and secures just like that. I would imagine 762 by 39 still works in this and considering that a lot of more modern Russian guns are basing that by 39 cartridge design, I would assume that 9 by 39 mags fit just fine, as long as you were able to find the larger ones, like those intended for the OTS-14 Groza, or perhaps one of the longer AS Val magazines. There have been incidents of people stretching these. You can find lots of pictures online of Soviet troops getting a hold of these, and you can see some of them have two magazines in them. While there was a two magazine pouch variant of the Type 56 early on, they're very difficult to come by. Most of what you see is people taking an existing one, setting it in water, and hammering two mags to fit into them. And the reason you know that is because the flaps will not close on someone who's modified theirs for two magazines. Whereas any of the other magazine type ones that would have and be designed for two mags would have the flap be able to close. Something else I also want to point out of these pouches is, you can kind of see it right there, there is this rubberized canvas or some type of waterproofing material at the top. You can see it's just at the top. That's where it ends. It's about the first inch, inch and a half at the top of the pouch. My best guess is to prevent water from going down into the bottom of the pouch because these do not have drain holes on them whatsoever. So that's my best guess for this. And we'll actually get to see more of this material when we get to the other pouches. All right, so moving to the operator's left side, or in your view, the right side of the rig, we have two more pouches right here. This pouch is actually designed for a box of 20 rounds of 7.62 by 39 ammunition. Now, that would be obviously used to replenish the magazines whenever you had downtime, or in case you're desperate, you could reload them during combat, although I would definitely consider that to be a poor choice to reload. However, if you do get an opportunity to, you could reload from this pouch. It's not designed to hold stripper clips like, would be, like, like what would be used for the SKS, however. It's a very short pouch. Now, what you could use this for airsoft, however, is one of two things. I like to put a radio on this side here, and you can see with a Baofeng UV5R, with the small type battery, you can actually close the flap on it. 
Of course, it allows access for the routing cable to a set of comms. And you can obviously run any antenna, but I have this two inch short stubby one on here just so it's a lot easier to deal with. But it stays secure, it's not gonna go anywhere. Uh, you will have to adjust the volume knob by opening up the pouch and doing it that way. And I've actually seen somebody modify this to stick, uh, to take, cut a hole through the top of the flap here and then poke the volume adjustment knob. This I think is kind of nice if you're doing a pickup game, you don't necessarily have to have the long battery or the extra large battery for the bail fangs. You can get away with just the small ones and then just having a couple of those. I think pretty much all the bail fangs I've ever purchased came with the small type batteries, so I have a plethora of them, and that's typically what I just use. Instead of fitting a radio, perhaps, you would like some additional firepower. I do not have a, an EG67 or any of the P-type grenades with me because they are all used up, <laughs> but I have a stand in here. This is an 800 count bottle of BBs that I've had for a very long time and I use this to take back and forth to games. This will be the stand in because it's about the right size for an EG67. You can actually tuck it in there very nicely and it's a little tight on the flap, but if you do not have to have the spoon and the top like you do, like you don't have on the EG67, you could have this ready to go to hold a grenade. Moving along, we have, you can see a different colored or at least a different style of pouch here. This particular pouch was designed for the oil bottle or the cleaning kit of the Type 56 rifle. You can see, just as I mentioned in the magazine pouches, we have this rubberized material that completely is inside of this pouch. Front, back, flap, everywhere. And that was done in order to prevent oil from leaking out and getting all over the chest rig and probably ultimately destroying it if it's left on there for too long. So if you have any type of spare parts or grease or a spray oil or anything like that, any type of risk where something could be leaking out, you could definitely stick it in here because it's pretty much waterproof for the most part. All right, so on the opposite side of the rig now to the operator's right or your left as you're viewing this video, we've got two more pouches here. This pouch is going to be a repeat of the other pouch on the other side. It is designed to hold a box of 20 rounds of 7.62 by 39 ammunition. However, it is certainly large enough to hold a grenade or a radio, depending on which side you want to put it on. You've got some flexibility there. But this pouch, is sort of your miscellaneous pouch, at least the way that this rig was intended. If I open it up here, you can kind of see the shape of it is definitely unique. It actually goes to the bottom of this edge here, whereas most of the other pouches don't or end at a straight right here. This pouch does not. And I believe that was done in order to maximize the number of things that you could use in it. I have found this to be pretty useful to store Two pistol mags. These are for a WE Makarov PM. And you could slide those in there. The angle at the bottom kind of allows them to be staggered a little bit and allows you to fit the flap a little bit more securely if you ask me. Just like that. But of course you could put just about anything in here. In fact, there is a little a strange looking divider in here off to the one side of the pouch. It actually has a little bit of elastic about halfway through. I don't know if you can really see that on camera, probably not. Trust me, there's a piece of elastic down there. My suspicion is that is what is intended for a grenade spoon because the Russian grenades were not as large as the American grenades, or at least they didn't have a uniform shape. They were more of a cylinder with a spoon and a pin with a tall uh, pin sticking out of it. So you could fit that inside of that little keeper there and that just kind of keeps it a little bit more secure. That's what I think it's for. However, you could use this for just about anything. You could stick a small pen in there, stick other miscellaneous things in there. The pouch has a couple of different uses you could use for it, but ultimately, at least from what I can find, 
it's a miscellaneous pouch. It's for whatever else you may need to be carrying. One thing that definitely makes the Type 56 chest rig unique is how the flaps are secured. You can see you have this little piece of looping right here around this wooden dog bone, spiky dog bone shape here. And then there's another loop that comes over the end of it. This keeps the flap secure whenever there's something in it. However, you just simply have to twist it, feed it through, and then you have access to the contents. Now, this makes these flaps very quiet, very silent, in case you wanted to sneak up on somebody or you have the drop on somebody, you're not going to give yourself away by peeling up Velcro or unsnapping a button or something like that. These are very quiet. However, if you use these with gloves, they can be kind of tricky and they take a little bit to master. I found the best thing to do is to twist them 90 degrees, pull up on them, and then you just pull up on the flap and then you have access to whatever is inside the pouch. And then, of course, to secure it, you just kind of have to, you can see I'm fumbling with it already, but I'm sure you could barely hear the canvas and the other materials here moving around. Like I said, it's not like Velcro. It's not going to make a noise whenever you open it back and forth. So one other thing I wanted to highlight about this rig is that the harness system is very simple. You can tell it's very cheap and it's not exactly the most comfortable, but you can certainly find ways around it. Uh, the X harness, as you can see right here, is directly sewn into the Type 56 rig itself. These appear to be made of AK sling type webbing material. It is very heavy. It's very thick, but you can definitely tell this is some durable stuff. It's only one inch wide, so it's going to put some pressure on your shoulders. But if this is a kind of lighter rig, as it's intended, I would imagine you wouldn't be able to carry that much stuff unless you stretched it and really started to stuff mags into it. Then the load might be getting uncomfortable for some people. I haven't found it to be a problem so far, but certainly something to make note of. The waist is actually tied much like an apron or like you tie your shoe. You just use a couple of bunny ear loops and you're all tied up in the back. This can kind of make it difficult since you have to do this around your back and you're not actually looking at it, but it's certainly doable. I've seen somebody mod this to accept buckles so that you have a buckle here and a buckle on the other side very similar to a modern chest rig in order to eliminate that or maybe perhaps have one buckle in the middle that they just have to connect. In order to adjust the rig, you can see here you have these metal steel D-rings and in order to adjust it, you simply untie this overhand knot, adjust it to the length that you want, retie it, that secures it. And then as you can see, I've done on this end, there are these little leather loops over the ends of the X harness that you slide down in order to keep the excess material away from getting snagged or caught or uh, cut on something. Because my particular example is from the 1970s, at least my best guess, it's from the 1970s. The leather is pretty much shot. It's hard as a rock. It's very stiff. It actually took a lot just to get this one in, and I actually have trouble trouble getting this one to thread through this leather loop. Uh, the leather's just secured with a couple of stitches right there, and I'd imagine someone could do that by hand. If you want to replace it, I'm sure you certainly could, and you could have some extra leather. It'd be relatively inexpensive to replace these. However, I'm just leaving them on just because I don't have a ton of trailing material here, but I can understand how this could certainly get in the way of somebody. All right, I zoomed out a little bit and I took everything that I've been playing around with and set it out here so you can kind of see what this chest rig holds. I have a radio, three magazines, a hand grenade, or some type of BB reloading device. I have an additional speed loader here, which could be fit in either the grenade pouch or the radio pouch, uh, or perhaps this magazine pistol pouch, but I also have two pistol mags here as well. This kind of makes this kit a nice, simple, lightweight rig. It seems that a lot of tactical gear brands 
now are going towards trimming away all the excess bulk, all the extra, extra material, and going with lower profile, much simpler rigs. So I think the old school Chinese Type 56 is still relevant even today. You could hold just enough things to go to a day trip, or if you wanted to be sort of that lightweight, high speed, low drag kind of person with a Soviet type or a Russian type weapon system, you could do that effectively out on the airsoft field. Well, that's it for this episode of Gun Gamers. As you can see, the Type 56 makes a nice little recon or low vis or even just a lightweight chest rig type variant. It's really early design, kind of the chest rig. Uh, the Russians actually copy this for their early pattern left checks or leaf checks. I'm not sure if that's pronouncing it right, but I'll throw the actual spelling of that at the bottom so that way you can try to decipher it along with me. But it's actually not a bad rig at all. These are very inexpensive. I think you can find most of these on eBay or any of the other auction type sites. I've even seen these on Amazon. If you find them on eBay, you can usually get them for between 10 to $20. Amazon, I've seen them upwards of 30. So if you want something really cheap, but authentic, the Type 56 chest rig is sort of a go-to. I'm definitely gonna be using this at the next Milson West event that I go militia at. I'm going to couple it with another uh, additional weapon system that I'll cover hopefully later this year. I know some folks might be concerned about the color. As you can see in this rig, it's very tan. Um, that's not the case with all of these, and it kind of depends on which one you get. Some of them are going to be in this really tan sand type color. Others are going to be in a green olive type color. So it's kind of a hit or miss type thing. I managed to get this one. I way overpaid for it, I'll tell you that much, but I will not disclose that because it's only slightly embarrassing. Anyway, that is an overview of the Type 56 chest rig here at Gun Gamers. If you like videos like this and you wanna see more of that, feel free to like, subscribe, favorite this video, and if you wanna discuss what your favorite chest rig system is or what type of other Russian gear you may use, feel free to post a comment below. Until next time, I'm Gare from Gun Gamers, and I'll be seeing you. Thank you for watching this video from Gun Gamers. We hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. If you want to see more content from us, hit that subscribe button, and if you want to help support the channel, be sure to click the link below to buy a patch. Praise Judy.